But the Minnesota Vikings at seven and six are in a spot right now, and the Cincinnati Bengals are just on the outside looking in. This is a crucial game for both teams, Nick. It looks like the Bengals have something in Jake Browning, and the Vikings are still looking for answers at quarterback. Yeah, Jake Browning, the story is pretty darn remarkable. We have to give a shout out, obviously, to Zach Taylor and Brian Callahan, offensive coordinator there. The offense, what they're doing with Jake Browning is completely different than what we've seen with Joe Burrow. Joe Burrow, you know, it's a little bit more shotgun, surveying the field, quick pass game, and they're really going much more to the Kyle Shanahan-esque uh, style Browning play action, get the running backs involved in the screen game. Shout out Chase Brown, University of Illinois out there, doing some things for them there. Uh, so that's yeah, been pretty impressive. And the Jake Browning story itself is unbelievable. It's going to be a book or something at some point. I mean, he was bouncing around the league for a while. He was, I guess, a day away from driving down to Oregon State Corvallis and joining the coaching staff there, and they called him in, and he made himself somewhat ind indispensable. Uh, he was joining all the defensive meetings. He was uh, with, with all the coaches, constantly sitting with guys, really just kind of taking the, the mentor coaching side of things and giving insight. And the Bengals last year rewarded him with a few activations, get him a few extra dollars, and here we are today, uh, former Washington Husky Browning has been uh, playing pretty well. I think, personally, I know he's playing well. I think it's more system uh, than it is Browning. I'm kind of waiting for the shoe to drop as far as there's going to be some sort of route concept or area of the field that's going to be exploitable that he's just not going to get because he doesn't have the RPMs on the arm. Uh, but he's playing pretty well. Jamar Chase is quarterback independent. And uh, shout out to the Bengals coaching staff. They're uh, our, our menu, I can never remember the defensive coordinator name, uh, but they got a heck of a staff and they're doing good things out there. Yeah. Keith says, why can't the Falcons find them a Browning? Um, it, it, this is, it could be short term and, and it will be short term. Browning will be a free agent. You want a Browning, go get a Browning because he, he will not be the number one quarterback in Cincinnati. Joe Burrow will. It's, you know, even financially speaking, that's just the way it's going to be. Um, so again, as Nick says, sample size, you know, we've seen guys come out hot. Bailey Zappi was the big thing for a little while last year. Mac Jones uh, two years ago. So can you sustain it? it that, that's what makes it, you know, um, the Falcons have had Desmond Ritter had some good games. Marcus Mariota was AFC, or NFC player of the week one week. And then, you know, NFC goat of the week, the bad goat, you know, when, you know, not the greatest of all time goat, but the, you're the. That's how I grew up with a goat. Fault. It was, it's yeah, your fault. you're at fault. <laughs> you're the hero or the goat. Yeah. You know, so we'll we'll see how it goes. But again, there's more experience there, but I don't think it's a big statement to say Zach Taylor is a better quarterback coach and offensive coordinator than Arthur Smith at this stage of their careers. And, and I mean, they what how drastic they were able to change things and their points of emphasis. I mean, that's good coaches are able to take what pieces you have and say, okay, what works? That's part of also what Browning. Uh, has done as well. They've gone through games and practice and whatnot. He said, these are the things I need to work on. And they've cobbled together schemes, preferences, designs that he feels comfortable executing. Uh, so it's not just, this is my system. This is what you're running. It's okay. What can we do within the parameters of our system to make you a better player? And again, shout out to the Bengals staff. They were left for dead, rightfully so after Burrow died and how they looked a lot this <laughs> season. And now they look uh, really feisty, still low playoff odds. Uh, but I mean, man, uh, Again, I keep coming back to a coaching staff. Pretty incredible. Also, the the bones of the offense, pretty great as well. T. Higgins, uh, obviously Jamar Chase, uh, offensive line, running backs. That they've been somewhat maligned during the Burrow era, but they're getting it done right now with Browning. Yeah, the Bengals right now are at only a thirty percent at seven and six, but a win would help them out considerably. Um, and just bringing it back to the Vikings. Uh, and then we'll talk, we'll, we'll get you, Michael, on this that I've got you shown on the screen about the Chargers. Uh, bringing it back to the Vikings, Josh Dobbs was flavor of the month for a couple of weeks. Mm -hmm. um, now he's third team. You know, now he's the emergency quarterback. He's been put behind. Uh, I'm not sure who's starting for the the Vikings. I've already forgotten. I know the rookie, Jaron Hall, is backup. It's Nick Mullins. Okay. I don't know much about Nick Mullins. He was that guy who came out of nowhere that... Uh, the 49ers won a bunch of games with and people like, Oh my gosh, this Mullins guy might be okay. But really it was the Kyle Shanahan, you know, puppet master stuff going on there in San Francisco. Yeah. Uh, so he won some games. He has some starts, but limited quarterback and Jet Dobbs, incredible athlete can do some stuff, but the drop back pass game, even though he's a rocket scientist, just doesn't see the field very well. I mean, there's a difference between processing intelligence and understanding uh, leverages and spacing uh, and being able to analyze that and understand where the ball needs to go versus, you know, book smart, 
Josh Dobbs, obviously brilliant in that regard. So yeah. Nick Mullins so, will be better in the drop back pass game. I like the uh, I like the, the Bengals in this one. Um, it's at home. They're much more settled, as strange as that sounds, at the quarterback position. They're playing really well. The Bengals and Bills are turning into the teams that you know we thought they would be towards the end of the season. Will it be too late? Can either or both of them still get into the playoffs? Got another big matchup coming up with the Bills this week. What happened we to the Chargers? A little bit. I just want to give a shout out to the Vikings defense. Again, we kind of hinted at them earlier, but shutting out the Raiders team that just put up 63 the week prior, and they are fourth, I think, right now in EPA per play. They've been trending up. Uh, what Brian Flores has done has been phenomenal. I mean, he had pr- top 10 defenses every year he was at Miami. It's just the offense there was dreadful, and they are blitzing like crazy. I mean, they're almost a – blitzing's popular right now, but how much the Vikings do it and where they do it from is almost like a curveball compared to the rest of the league. And I know that with the NFL lawsuit stuff with Brian Flores, I don't – he's not totally toxic, obviously, because he's a defensive coordinator for a, a team, but – he should be getting head coaching interviews. I know everybody wants an offensive he line, but he's yeah, been he pretty phenomenal uh, out there in Minnesota. The fourth best EPA defense there, getting after the quarterback. And that's not a team defense that is littered with superstars. I mean, you got Daniel Hunter. After that, it's like I'm scratching my head a little bit uh, as far as the, you know, the all pro difference makers, first round talents. On that team. This out there is pretty good, too. Yeah. He is, but he's got to be like 35, 36, you know? Yeah, like but, a, you know, at safety, you can get away with that to a certain extent. Um, yeah, he's good. I just don't know if difference maker is yeah. where I would place him now. Uh, the Bengals have a tough road, but it looks like, you know, I, I think they, they well, at 7-6, and six, they hold their destiny in their own hands. They have Minnesota, a 7-6 and six team. They've got at Pittsburgh, never an easy game, despite the fact that Pittsburgh made the last two look easy. At Kansas City, who could be playing for something, and then Cleveland at home, and that could be a uh, a play in game right up. Was it seventy one there? I take seventy five to Cincinnati, and then and then head north to Akron when I used to drive up there when I was a kid, get driven up there when I was a kid up there for for Christmas and stuff this time of year. 